Uh, good morning. This is uh, our, our guest this morning is uh, Carolyn Sigler. She's a Sunday school teacher here at Wakaiva Springs Baptist Church. I'm John, and I'm going to be asking her to relate some of her old stories that I enjoy hearing so much. And um, Carolyn has been teaching the Sunday school for 40 plus years, and she knows a lot of kids here that have grown up, and we all love her, and she all loves us. She actually sure. taught my. Hmm? That's true. Uh, she taught my kids in Sunday school, and uh, uh, so now I'm trying to return the favor by helping out here in the primary grades. But I love hearing Carolyn tell stories. So, uh, Carolyn, tell us about when you're growing up, what it was like uh, when your your dad asked you to work in the garden. I love that story. Well, to start with, he says, "Kids, come on, we're going to plant some corn." And he said, I want you to uh, drop these seeds. And he showed us how far apart to drop them. But we didn't measure it. We just did it by eyeball. And w oh, wait a minute. This is your, your brother? Was he an My older brother? My brother. He's three and a half years younger than me. Oh, okay. And I was quite young. So we're dropping these seeds as Daddy plowed with a horse to make the uh, furrow to drop the seeds in. And, we and how, how long do you reckon the row was? Was it a 50-foot row? or? Oh, it was longer than that. Wow. And it was... Uh, I imagine that was probably an acre. So, Oh, really? So this is going to be sweet, sweet corn or what? Yeah, sweet corn. All right. Well, anyway, we dropped the uh, seeds. And Bob and I got tired. And after a while, we got to the end of the row, and we looked at our seeds, and we looked at what was still left, and we decided we'd plant them all at one time, and we did. Well, Daddy didn't say a word, but after... Uh, well, wait a minute. You, did you have a bag of seeds or, or a handful? It was a bag. Oh, my. Uh, a, what a bag that we could carry. Right. Uh-huh. Anyway, so, we got to the end of the well, row. Wait a minute. Uh, was it a hot day, or why do you think did you get? You said you got tired. Do you remember why? We wanted to go play. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I don't remember it being particularly hot that day, but Daddy didn't like to get started till ten o'clock of a day. All right. And by then, it is getting pretty warm. Mm -hmm. It never bothered him. And how, how many hours did he expect you to work? Oh, oh, just long enough to drop those seeds. Yeah. But anyway, after a while, he, uh, well, he covered, covered up everything. I'm sure he saw what happened. But when they started coming up, he said, all right, kids, come here. I want to show you something. Why is all this corn in one spot? <laughs> Uh, we were caught. We didn't get in trouble, but we learned a lesson. Uh huh. What we do will be found out. Okay, so he found out, and uh, so you didn't get licked for that, huh? Oh no. Oh, did Not you? That. Did your dad ever give you lickings? Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. I guess. Now you're the older sister, so you're the responsible one. So you got well, licked more than your brother, right? Well, I was gone. Before he was, so mm. he got him later. <laughs> but we went to the fair, and Daddy says, uh, I, we were older then, and Daddy said, I want you to be at this gate at a certain time, and I'll come pick you up, and we'll go home. Well, Daddy wasn't known for being on time, and Bob and I stood there, and we waited, and we waited, and we waited, and we got so tired. Well, Daddy was home working. So we, I said, come on, Bob, we'll just get on the bus and go home. Yeah, we you, did. You weren't able to call your dad or anything. No, you were just supposed to no meet phone. Him. He, uh, he did finally go up there, and he couldn't find us, but he didn't take a bath before he went. He was out in the garden working, and he was at that fairground looking all over for us and him dirty as all get out. Oh. Embarrassed to death. Yeah. Well, when we got home, or he got home, where have you been? Why weren't you at that gate? 
Daddy, we got tired of waiting. Well, the peach tree had a visitor named my daddy. That was the switch. That was a switch, and I, buddy, I got it. All right. My brother didn't know how to catch the bus by then uh -huh. at that time. So it was you and your brother again going to the fair. Right. Uh huh. All right. But anyway, it, we learned a lesson. Mm -hmm. When Daddy says be somewhere, you better stay there and wait for him. So I think if more kids had their behinds blistered with a switch a time or two, it wouldn't have to be done very often. Mm -hmm. They'd learn the lesson. Yeah. But I love my parents, and I thank God for them. I love my grandparents, because they took care of us the way God said. And God said, spare the rod and spoil the child. Well, did you practice that, though, with your, your kids growing yes. up? I didn't beat them. But I, I found out when I was a little girl at the age of five, or actually a little bit before then, uh, we lived over in what's the Navy base now. But there was a, a deep sand in the road out there in front of us, and there were some new teenage drivers driving back then. And they would rev that car up to get through that sand without getting stuck. And I would take my little bucket and my shovel and go out there and sit down in the road to dig sand. Dangerous, isn't it? And yes, and Mama said, "Don't do that." Well, I, I did. I kept doing it. I kind of bullheaded. She went and got some pine needles, those long ones that are like nine to twelve inches long, and she got three or four of those, and she blistered mine from my ankles up to my panties. All the way to the house, and she said, "I told you, don't do this anymore, or you'll get killed." Right. She grabbed the first thing she could find. To whip well, you it, it it didn't blister. It actually stung like right. ants. Uh huh. But I never played in that road again. All right, you learned your lesson. So that was the two times that, but I I realized it worked. Uh huh. And they, she explained to me, I love you, and I don't like doing this, but I don't want to scrape you up out of the dirt either. Right. Now, doesn't the Bible speak about that? Yes, it does. Spare mm -hmm. the rod and spoil the child. Mm -hmm. The rod of correction. And we're supposed to correct our children and tell them why we're correcting them. Yeah, for their own good. We don't just beat them and get mad at them. Yeah. That's, that's not what God said to do. But we are supposed to correct our children. Well, thank you.